Hello, friends of the Uthelmo channel. My name is Marcelo Castilla. I'm professor of chemical engineering of Texas A&M University at Qatar. And today I have two colleagues from the university with me, Dr. Sarah Hillman, who is an assistant professor in the English department, liberal arts, and Dr. Hala Salama, who is instructional associate professor of chemical engineering. And they have done a recent work, recent research on being a female engineering student in Qatar, and what we'll learn from them about this research, what they have found. Uh, welcome, Sarah, Thank to you. the program. <laughs> and first, I would like to ask you a little bit about your background, how many years you have been in the Middle East. Um, so I'm an applied linguist. I have a PhD in applied linguistics, second language acquisition, um, but I also did a specialization in Arabic and Middle Eastern studies. Um, I've been teaching in Qatar for almost two years now, but I also um, previously lived and studied in Egypt, Syria, and East Jerusalem. All right. And Hala, what is your background? My background is chemical engineering all the way, um, and I've been in academia ever since I got my degrees. Um, I have taught both in the U.S. and in the MENA region for many, many, many years. <laughs> and uh, could you tell us a little bit about the research project you undertook recently? So um, we received some internal grant money to do a collaborative faculty student research project, basically examining um, female students' experiences and their perspectives on their academic and social experiences studying engineering um, at Texas A&M University. Um, and our findings, they draw on um, a series of focus groups that we did with female students. We gave an anonymous survey um, that about 50% of our female student body completed. Um, and then some of the data also just comes from sort of this self-reflexive research meetings that we had with the female students who were researchers but also participants as well. Um, and our research basically looks at the experiences that the students had in relation to the universities. Um, institutional strengths and challenges, and then we give some recommendations as well. Right, and from your study, did you find out that interest in engineering is self-driven, or is it family motivated? What's the motivation for the... Uh, uh, from the research, yes, uh, we saw that it was either uh, something they've always wanted to do, something they were passionate about from a really young age, and some other students um, wanted to prove themselves, uh, they wanted to do something different other than what, than the norm. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what we uh, saw from the research. And even though some of the, you know, parents weren't really excited or enthusiastic about this choice, but they did uh, support the student with their uh, decision. Right. Uh, and once girls join an engineering program, do you think that they keep their motivation? Are they motivated all the way through? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. At least from what I see in the courses that I teach, um, the you know the the high grades or uh, how they perform, I can see at least in the in the first top ten percent uh, percentile, there's, there's a high percentage of uh, females that get these high grades um, in terms of performance. And also in the student organizations, you would see a lot of the females take leadership roles in these uh, positions. So no, I, I see them very motivated. Yeah, and I would, I would also just add that I think engineering um, enjoys a particularly high status in the Middle East. You know, it attracts both males and females, um, which is a little bit different than maybe other parts of the world. Um, and I think that's kind of part of the whole, you know, there's this, Social cultural transformation happening here, and lots of engineering projects, and sort of part of the whole discourse is that women, you know, are vital to sort of these visions taking place. Um, so I do think, you know, women are hearing this and they're inspired, you know, by this discourse happening outside as well. Mm -hmm. And these distinguished performance also happens in the liberal arts courses in English, for example. Um, yeah, I mean, we have very highly motivated female students and they do quite well in their liberal arts courses, yes. And in terms of the fields of engineering, so Texas A&M offers chemical, mechanical, petroleum, and electrical. 
So what are the favorite engineering fields for the female students? Okay, if I, if I, I can say, I guess favorite would be the highest percentage of females. Yeah, let's take it that way. Yeah, I can take it that way. We can find them in electrical engineering. They have uh, over 50%, 56% female. And then right after that comes uh, chemical and petroleum, and the percentage there is uh, above 40% female in that uh, student population, yeah. And in the classroom, uh, do, from the professional standpoint, do the students, uh, female students and the male students get along very well? Or are they treated as equals? Um, <laughs> again, we, we found the answer to that. I'm going to let Sarah answer that um, one. I mean, the short answer is no. <laughs> um, well, some of the themes that came out of the focus groups and what some of the females wrote on the surveys um, was that they did experience you know, some gender bias um, from both male faculty and male peers. Um, in terms of male faculty, um, they mentioned things like they felt that um, you know, some of the, the male faculty didn't expect as much from them, um, that they felt like maybe, you know, they were given easier questions or that the male faculty were more lenient with them. So they felt like they had kind of had to prove themselves and their intelligence a little bit more. Um, some of the females also mentioned that, particularly in group work with their male peers, they felt like, you know, some of the male peers maybe didn't quite respect them as equals, that they kind of talked to them a little bit condescendingly. Um, or in condescending ways, um, and you know, so, and it was funny because some of the, the females also mentioned that they felt like the males would be intimidated if they truly, you know, spoke their mind. Um, actually, I'll just, if it's okay, I'd, I'd like well, to just read um, just two quotes that that from our, from our student participants um, regarding sort of males and group work. Um, so one student she said she said, I feel like sometimes when they're helping you, and she's talking about male classmates. They're judging, like you're just a girl. It's normal, you didn't understand this. So they try to dumb it down for you and it's offensive. And I feel like they do it unconsciously though. And then another student, she talks about how she was in a group work um, and there was only one boy and the girls did all the work, but then at the end when they decided who was gonna be like the leader of the group, the, the boy's like, you know, I'll be the leader since, since I'm the boy, you know. Um, and one other thing that, that a lot of the female students talked about were some of the sort of gender attitudes um, in this region, well, in terms of the gender roles. So they felt like some of the boys would be like, you know, you don't need to worry because even if it doesn't work out for you, you know, you can drop out. Like it's, 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 it's not gonna be, you know, a problem for you because you can just go and get married. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of maybe this attitude that it's fine for women, you know, to get degrees and to work, but it's not like a duty as it is, you know, for the male students. At Texas A&M, there are few uh, female instructors in engineering. Um, true. They, true, right? <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's your opinion? Does this relative lack of role models uh, play a role, affect the girls in any way? Do you think having more female faculty members in engineering would help them? Yes, uh, definitely. But again, I'm going to leave Sarah elaborate on this um, because, yes, we do need more female faculty. Yes, the girls yeah. need role models. Um, I mean, just, so just to give some numbers, if we combine um, engineering and science, science faculty together, yeah. we have 66 faculty members. Um, and there's only six that are female and actually two are leaving. So that's going to be four out of the 66 that are female. Um, and, and only one's and at an associate professor yeah. um, level. So, I mean, our students definitely do um, have a lack of female role models. Um, and, and we know from research, you know, that having female role models that are like you, I'm, I mean, it, it encourages students to, you know, succeed to, and, yeah. and to be to, inspired, to be inspired, to push them to work harder. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, they have a large female student body. Um, yeah. So that so also provides a support network for them. Yeah. Right. And what about after graduation? Are there employment opportunities for female engineers in Qatar? Okay, we didn't really do a study on that, uh, but I, I, would pro I will answer this through my personal experience when I, when I talk to the students, when I bump into them. Um, obviously, it is 
challenging to uh, for them to find an engineering job or something that they wanted to do some of them are offered uh, office jobs and and they're not happy with that or just doing redundant uh, day-to-day duties that again they say well we didn't study four years to so just you know read this manual or something so it is a bit challenging yes <laughs> From my personal, I mean, I get personal encounters. We didn't uh, do a study on that. That'll be in our future um, plans. But at the same time, uh, Heather res- recently uh, interviewed one of our former students for the channel, and she had a very exciting job, right? She was one of the first yes. female engineers to amazing. ever work in an oil rig in, in Qatar. That so was there amazing. are cases in which they get very definitely, exciting. Definitely, mm-hmm. yes. But majority were uh, um, not so lucky like her, you know. I, again, I mean, it's just, yeah, I don't have definite numbers here, so, yeah. Right, and out of this study, uh, what recommendations, uh, what were the conclusions and the plenty. key recommendations? You have plenty. <laughs> you have plenty of them. Plenty. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sarah will read um, them. <laughs> from, so from the focus groups, the surveys, meetings with our faculty student research team, we actually came up with nine recommendations. So I'll just, if we have time, I'll just go through them each briefly. Um, sure. So the first one was basically to create more opportunities um, for more interaction, including informal conversations with um, alumni. Um, so a lot of the females felt like you know, when the females graduate, they just disappear and they never hear from them again. And so they definitely want, you know, more interaction. They want to know mm-hmm. what's going on. Um, and they mentioned, you know, it's a little bit different for the males because a lot of the current male students, they're, they're friends with the alumni and they come back and they interact. And so they get sort of that informal networking and get to ask about, you know, life and industry, whereas the females sort of feel like they, you know, they're left they out. disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, you know, we would like to encourage um, maybe some kind of mentorship program or something like that with alumni. Um, and related to that, like our second um, recommendation is to invite more women working in industry to give lectures and workshops. Um, so I think we do, we do do some of this, but I think given the high percentage of female students that we have, we could be doing even more and maybe even like organizing some kind of special lecture series, you know, focused on women in STEM. Um, we also talked about hiring more female professors um, so that the students have more role models. Um, and I just wanted to say with regards to that, I think it's really important that that process happens before like applications are received for a job because it's very easy to sort of look at applications and say, okay, you know, sorry, there's no females that applied or there's no qualified females, you know, it's not our fault. But I think, I think if an institution is really, um, um, committed to diversity and to increasing that ratio of female to male. They need to be, you know, out rigorously recruiting women um, before the job ad even goes out um, and, you know, creating a climate where women want to work. Um, another recommendation, fourth recommendation, was looking at creating more um, workplace skill development for current female students. Um, Because we know from research that women, they struggle a lot to kind of transform the knowledge that they have into product. So they're insufficiently prepared for the workplace. They lack confidence because it's a male-dominated field. Um, So maybe some more workplace skill development, maybe offering even um, some continuing education for professional female engineers, maybe on topics like, you know, what do you do? How do you deal with gender bias or how do you negotiate or these sorts of things? Our fifth recommendation was um, liaising with industry to encourage equal sponsorship opportunities and more equal hiring and retention practices. Um, I don't, we don't, I don't have a lot of the statistics on that, so I don't feel entirely equipped to talk about that, but I will say the perceptions from our students is that a lot of the internships and research projects are more geared toward the male students. So that's their perception at least. We also think it's important to provide opportunities for students to be able to discuss any incidents of gender bias or sexism on campus in a safe space. Um, So there may be various ways that we could do that. Um, We talked about, we have a society of women engineers at TAMUQ, um, but participation in it hasn't been that great and it's kind of tended to focus more on social events. So one thing we talked about was maybe coordinating with our women's um, faculty forum 
and kind of giving more visibility and maybe hopefully getting a, a bigger budget for the Society for Women Engineers and then maybe be able to do some of these events like bring in, you know, um, some high profile alumni or do some workshops or that sort of thing. Um, um, and then our eighth recommendation was particularly related to our cutlery females. Um, so they talked a lot about really wanting a women's only lounge in, um, in the building. Um, there is a small space, but um, it's not really, it doesn't really have desks and sofas, and it's not really a comfortable place where women can sort of take off their abaya and relax. Um, and I mean, this may seem like a frivolous thing, but really it, it impacts the, the female students a lot because they end up going home in between classes because they don't have a place to sort of relax. And so therefore, you know, they're missing out on those informal opportunities to network and to participate in extracurricular activities and those sorts of things. Um, and then our final recommendation is just, you know, to continue to provide funding for faculty and students to do further research um, on issues facing women in engineering in Qatar um, and hopefully develop viable solutions. Yeah, because this <laughs> has to do with my next question, <laughs> which has to do uh, with plans to perhaps extend this research. Do you have plans to extend it? And if so, in which way? We, we would like to extend it further to um, do this with the alumni, um, see how they are doing, uh, how was it difficult finding a job, what, job w what jobs they have right now. Um, that sort of thing and yeah, did we, I miss we, something? We, no, we, I mean, we had hoped we had hoped to focus on alumni too in the semester but we we kind of ran out of time so we just focused yeah. on present students but that's sort of a natural extension um, and it might be interesting to look you know at the K-12 to too but I think it, it, I mean it, in this region it seems less of a problem of students Going, going into to, STEM fields, yeah. it's more of retention. Them, it, it's more of once they graduate, yeah. you know, going into going keeping, in, yeah, going keeping into their engineering jobs. Yes, yeah. keeping the degree in engineering and working in engineering. That seems to be the problem. Right. Entering engineering is not a problem. They are capable. They're motivated. Very enthusiastic. The problem the retention is, is high. Yes, but the pro I'm saying retention. Yeah, retention. I meant. Uh, of, of the keeping their degrees and working in their field. Maybe, not, yeah, maybe I mean, the retention, retention the is not the work. Retention, yeah, yeah, yeah. retention, retention at the, the university is high. It's, it's high, but in retention profession. in the profession yeah. itself is a problem. You know, sometimes right. they also find uh, clashes between their family work and, and uh, right. you know, due to um, what the environment isn't really helping them to balance uh, work and family. So, like I said, yeah, retention in <laughs> in the job yeah, because or the what, career. I mean, this region distinguishes itself in the sense that like 60% of engineering students are actually females like in the Gulf region. And that's actually double the percentage what's in the USA and Europe. But I mean, when it comes to after graduation, how many are ending the workforce, it's something like one in five. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, what's happening at that, at that point yeah, is important. There's, there's a leak. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a leak in the pipeline. Yeah. And generally speaking, do you think the conclusions you have reached in this work are transferable to other countries in the region or perhaps even beyond? Yeah, I mean, Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think as we said, you know, in other parts of the world, maybe the, the issue is more the attracting women mm -hmm. to go into STEM fields, whereas ours is, you know, why are, they not, why are they not staying why, in it yeah. once, once they graduate? It's definitely um, applicable, yes, in the MENA region at least. But uh, I mean, in, in a lot of the research really um, has only been done in Western contexts. Like there's limited research that's been done in this area. Um, so, I mean, while there's challenges I think that are recurring challenges throughout the world for female you know students in STEM I think there are some things that are specific to this region um, um, particularly when it comes to maybe sociocultural norms um, stereotypes stereotypes um, for example some of our our female students talked about how it can be difficult to get to find a husband if you're too educated or yeah. if you have too high profile of a, of yeah. a, of a job yeah. um, then you know the it's families difficult. the families don't want the female to be more educated than the than you than know, the, the husband male, than yeah the husband. so they prefer yeah um, so that that, that, that causes things. problems yeah. um, I was also just going to mention I mean I think one of the most kind of powerful parts of of this project was really sort of this 
self-reflexive nature because the, the female students who participated in the research project, I mean, they really sort of became more cognizant of, of some of the issues, issues that women face. And yeah. we really hope that, you know, they'll go on to, you know, advocate for the women on campus and that they'll be more, you know, prepared when they go into the job field. Um, so, I mean, I think if more of this self-reflexive kind of research is done, um, it can really, you know, improve the status of women in STEM fields, so. And what would be your final words to female young engineering students and engineering professionals? Um, well, I would say follow your heart and uh, if, in, in, the, in the engineering field, definitely there will be challenges, but do not let that stop you. That's my final <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think I would say, like, don't let one or even many sexist comments, you know, like discourage you from, from following your passion and also like seek out a role model or seek out um, Support a network system, of, yeah. of females. Um, in your field if you can. I mean, it may, it may be difficult, you know, to find somebody in your particular division or company. You may have to go beyond that, but I think having a community um, really... Um, helps, it helps a lot. Gives you yeah. more self-confidence, mm -hmm. makes you feel more empowered. You have mm -hmm. a place where you can talk safely about some of the issues and challenges you may be facing. Yeah, so. maybe get ideas from them too and see how to face such challenges. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Hada for this beautiful interview, so informative. Thank you for watching this video, this presentation. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, visit our, face, uh, our page in Facebook, and subscribe to the channel, and see you next time. Bye, thank you. Hey, wait, we have one more topic. Sarah, please. Oh, well, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the inspiration for this project. Um, so last spring, spring of 2016, our Women's Faculty Forum, we did a panel on campus in which we brought some female alumni um, to come talk to both faculty and students about some of, like, how to deal with challenges, you know, that, that females face um, in industry and in business and academia. Um, and we had quite a few um, TEMUQ females that attended. And, like the response was very overwhelmingly positive. I mean, they said that they felt very inspired, very encouraged, you know, by hearing the experiences of alumni. Um, and also through the informal conversations that we had with them in roundtables, it became clear that many of them are facing challenges. So, I mean, things such as lack of support, maybe from their families or wondering, you know, how they're going to deal with work life balance or, you know, some of them have had incidents of gender bias and haven't really known you know, what to do about that or how to deal with it. Um, so I mean, I think that was one of the big inspirations for me in terms of why I wanted to look you know, further at the experiences of female engineering students. Okay, it's by now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>